All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from all the way across the pond, as they like, as the Americans like to say, from Nick Hill, who is in just outside Birmingham in the UK, in the Midlands. How are you doing, Nick? I'm all good, John. How are you? Excellent, excellent. And uh, Nick has focused the last 10 years on optimizing sales processes for brands within marketing, advertising industry, both on the service side and technology providers, SaaS, MarTech, AdTech, etc. Using technology to support the human side of selling has been Nick's passion since he started in sales. And we're going to talk about that is how can you turn cold online outreach into offline conversations and bring the human element back into it because I think Nick I think you'll agree that's what people are really craving today is more the human element uh, you know leveraging yeah. technology to support getting to that human interaction absolutely I think with um, you know with all the the technology we have at our disposal now and let's be honest this conversation is quite timely with the release of you know the first deployment of generative AI, i.e. chat GPT, that seems to be all over everyone's mm -hmm. LinkedIn feeds at the moment. I think that just kind of kind of really highlights that there's a, we've got a luxury of technology uh, available to us for any kind of marketing and sales now. Um, the, the challenge with that is, is when people get prospected now, are they actually getting prospected by you or I, or is, or is it machine or is it automation? And I think now that we're getting to this point where especially with cold outreach, which is what we do obviously all day, every day for clients is that, you know, that we're having to fight to make our messages appear more human, even when they are human. Um, for example, the classic example is when somebody connects you on LinkedIn now and says, hey, I'd just like to bring you into my network. The first thing that I think most people, and we, we speak to people about this all the time, is, is that really you <laughs> connecting with me or is this on my part of some sequence? And when are you going to sell me something uh, when we are connected? I can't, we kind of get a lot of these perceptions now have been built up over the last couple of years around cold outreach. And that's something that we're really trying to work against, you know, spam and growth hacking and all the kind of stuff that we see out there at the moment with cold outreach. Yeah, um, no, I agree with you. And I, and I think, to be honest, I think there's there is a, a bit of an ethical uh, issue here as well, to be perfectly honest, because yeah. if you're going to if, if you're going to outreach to me with a bot or it's a I mean, I kind of have the right to know in some ways, you know, you should be upfront and honest about it, because to your point, because otherwise we're just going to assume everything is a bot. Everything is AI. And, and your point <laughs> about LinkedIn, I actually I actually messaged the uh, CEO of LinkedIn at one stage a year or two ago to tell him please take away that automated email thing when somebody sends you a connection and it's all lovely and personalized and you think oh it's a genuine person wanting to connect and then you hit accept and bing up pops their pitch immediately I, I can't yeah stand exactly it. it's it's you know it, it's creating a big problem you can imagine the problem for linkedin though right because the platform why do mm -hmm. we go on to LinkedIn? Primarily, we go on LinkedIn ultimately to grow our network, to grow our business. Or if you're in, if you're in a if you're in a company, it's to grow your profile, it's to make more clients. Ultimately, it's, to, it's for new business, isn't it? It's for sales. That's the mm -hmm. reason why most people are on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn have to deal with that. But the the the, the purge of all these uh, extensions and bots and and tools, it must be a, a complete nightmare for them because they don't want to stop people from connecting and networking and growing their businesses through the mm -hmm. platform that's why it exists but how do they deal with that issue now i think we without going into too much detail because i don't know what's going on with this but we one of our investors in my conversation uh knows somebody who knows somebody who's basically done a big project with linkedin <clears throat> over about six months ago about this so that that tells us that they are taking it seriously and changes may be afoot with the platform, you know, to try and deal with it. So we, we're obviously conscious of that as well at my conversation and how we can kind of, we don't, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to get sucked into that kind of wall garden, but LinkedIn is also a great place for people to sure. genuinely sure. give value. Yeah. Um, so then uh, when you're, when you're doing your outreach, then uh, you mentioned at the beginning that you, I mean, now you almost have to make it more human and what do you do differently to, to, with your outreach to get people to, you know, want to have conversations? Yeah, it's a good question. Actually, I did 
a presentation to um, NatWest Bank in the UK. They're, they're a well-known brand. Um, not so, not sure about the US, but in the UK, they're one of the big mm-hmm. banks. Yeah. And mm-hmm. sat in a room of about 100 entrepreneurs who part one of their accelerator programs. And this was the exact subject. And I spent two hours on it. So I'm conscious we haven't got two hours to go through <laughs> what we do and how we do it. So I'll kind of summarize it the best way I can. There's lots of different layers yeah. to this. But the biggest question that I asked, the, the room, and I think we have the answers already, which is what what is the what is the single most uh, annoying thing about any kind of cold outreach? So it's cold calls, cold emails, cold LinkedIn connection requests, and that was the question: which what is the most annoying thing? And there's lots of different things come back. You know, like, like we just talked about the, the the person who you know automates it and it's not personalised. And I, I, we we thought about this for a while uh, as a business doing what we do, and the, we think the biggest biggest problem with all of it is irrelevancy, and yeah. that means that most of the times where you get annoyed by cold outreach, it's because it's irrelevant to you, or the content is irrelevant. So there's two parts, that, isn't there? So from for, from our perspective, that's a big thing that we look at before we even start to you know craft the email copy or put together a campaign is. Well, how do we make sure that if we're sending out emails to lots of different people that we can maintain relevancy because relevancy is better than personalization. And what I mean by that is we can personalize emails with technology, add in someone's first name and the company and the job title and all these kind of stuff. But it'll still feel automated. It'll still, and if it's irrelevant, it's, it's, it's pointless. So for us, relevancy is making sure that we are talking to the right person. That's really important and something that's often neglected which is the quality of the data you're using and the targeting that you've got in your campaigns the audience that you're trying to go after and making sure you've got you, you, your, your emails or your calls or your connection requests are going to the right people and then the next part of that is content because i think that's mm-hmm. another thing that's often overlooked in cold outreach is you have an opportunity especially in the current age where most business buying has shifted online over the last three years and it continues to go online is buyers are more in, well in, educated and informed and they expect content. So for us, our cold outreach is less about trying to go for a, a meeting or let's say get married on a first date. And it's mm-hmm. more about starting a conversation through relevant content to relevant individuals. And that's really what gets that human to human bit going without necessarily having to sit there and write down an email line by line. Because we've got technology that does all that. Yeah. But the bit that it doesn't do is what we just what I've just mentioned, which is relevancy. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Nick, uh, the relevancy piece, uh, because, yeah, I mean, you can personalize stuff and you can do all of that, but if it's not relevant. And the other thing I've seen, I've seen a trend recently. I mean, I know it's always been this idea of like, you know, maybe create uncertainty or fear, but um, I get a lot of emails which basically say, oh, here's the problems with your brand or here's the problems with whatever. And I'm like, excuse me? Um, Like, you don't start off by saying, listen, here's everything that's crap about you. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> I think what they've done to follow some really good copywriting principles, like I like Ada attention, yeah. attention, yeah, is, yeah. And all that kind of stuff. But and the problem bit is really important, right? If we're not creating some kind of, uh, if we're not sort of digging into a problem, um, it's going to be pretty pointless taking the conversation forward. But that that's more to me. That's more on the discovery side. Like, let's find yeah. out how we can work together. I think what what should what they should be doing is being more assumptive and less informative. And that's mm-hmm. something that, I, I mean, I follow loads of cold email experts and yeah. I get my LinkedIn feed gets flooded with it. And that's the one thing that the real experts talk about a lot, which is be assumptive, be curious and saying to somebody, you have this problem. That's not actually cute. That's not assumptive, that's informative. You're basically mm-hmm. telling them this is the problem. Whereas curiosity might be, assumptive might be, I'm just wondering whether this might be something that He's, he's on the yeah. radar right now and that's a much better way to position that problem mm-hmm. and then and then um so when you start when you start this outreach and you start the conversation i think one of the pieces that's always challenging for people is how to elegantly move the conversation offline in a way that makes sense for both parties because sometimes people try to do it yeah. too quickly some people <laughs> sometimes they don't do it quickly enough yeah is absolutely right. So again, I think I mentioned this, just alluded to it earlier, but the the way that we move conversations offline is through conversational call to actions. 
So what we're not looking to do on that email sequence is say, hey, when are you free? Here's my diary link to booking a call because people just aren't ready for that, right? You, I've mm -hmm. just met you. You've just emailed me. I don't know you. Next thing you're asking me to book, you're asking me to book in your diary. You know, it's very, very, if you think about that in a real human scenario, you'd be like, you've got some cheat, mate. Yeah. If somebody said yeah, yeah. that. So, so we need to mirror that in a, in the cold outreach. We, we, we've knocked the door. We, we, we suggest them as an opportunity for us to talk, but they're not ready for that. So conversational call to action are things like, I'm wondering whether this is worth exploring. Is this, you know, is this something that's, that you're dealing with right now? Um, are you curious to, you know, can I share more insights on this? Are you curious yeah. to learn more about this? That's a conversational call to action. Then somebody responds. Let's be honest, the, the biggest, the, the main objective of any cold outreach is to start a conversation, not book a meeting or do a sale. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to do that, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, and unfortunately, Nick, I think because of the culture we live in today, everybody thinks there's shortcuts to to everything. So um, in many yeah. ways, people do think, oh, well, you know, I should get this immediately. Yeah, but I like what I like what you're saying there, because, yeah, it, it is it has become so convenient to just say, here, book a meeting with me. Here's my link or whatever. You do all the work and just let me know when you're ready to buy from me. And uh, and obviously, you know, that doesn't really work. But I, I see that so often. It's like it's like one reply and they're immediately into that. And, and it just seems that we've lost the art of patiently building. And I think that's what people 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 respect that when it happens, I think. Yeah, definitely. So I think we're moving more towards like as a business and as a technology provider, um, our kind of our focus for this year and moving forward is what we call content driven engagement. So we're looking more at making sure that we, you know, obviously reaching out to the right people at the right mm -hmm. time, but the right content and our technology, we started to develop our technology around that concept of well, what content, what, what is that like? Because that's different for each person and different for each person at each part of the buying journey they might be in, right? So how do we manage all of that? So there's a lot of data that sits behind all that and technology. But the core, the core principle, it is what we've just said, which is if I send you the right content and continue to engage you with content, and I'm doing that in a, in a structured, meaningful way, it's really easy for you to jump in at the right point for you and in your buying journey. And it's a great experience for you as the buyer. Um, as long as we're talking to the right people and the content is relevant, that's that's the key. But I, the, the data that we're the, we're so lucky, we are able to tap into AI because AI mm -hmm. can help us with understanding those personalities and and therefore if we know the people and the personality, we know a little bit about them in a compliant way, of course, without being stalkerish. We can start <laughs> to put together a nice nurture sequence from a so it's like the equivalent of a marketing nurture sequence but from a cold outreach perspective and i think that's what buyers would would want now in in the modern in 2023 is you know they want to they, you know we all we all need to reach out as business owners and yep. salespeople. we all need to prospect but on the other on the flip side we like to be prospected and reached out to in a certain way and i think that's what we're trying to do yeah, because it's, I mean, it always amazes me. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Like we all, if somebody prospects us or we're the buyer, like we want to be treated in a particular way. But then sometimes we cross the threshold of our office and suddenly we prospect in exactly the way we wouldn't want to be prospected to. So we, it, it, it always it always amazes me. But one thing you just mentioned there, I think is, is important too, is the idea of content, because sometimes people think, oh, share valuable content, right? So they just start firing irrelevant white papers or they start, li and there's no thought behind behind and you're just going well thanks for that I'm, that's of totally not, not, <laughs> not relevant to me great thanks <laughs> yeah like that's the key isn't it i think that's where the data comes in that's where understanding the person and the personality comes in i think we we're looking at ways that we can you know it's not an exact science but ways that we can understand each individual work out where they are who they are and so the content that we're sharing is not like you just said not just another a link that's going to sit in an email that is never going to get looked at, but it's actually timely. It's 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 completely relevant to them, completely relevant to their role, and and it's it's valuable. Like as in, there's something that they can do something with it because we we thought about it, and if, if we haven't thought about it, our process and our technology is certainly thinking about it. I think there's two ways you can do that. Obviously, we're talking about this from a technology at scale perspective, but if mm -hmm. it's you or I doing this manually, 
the tools are out there. Like we, there's a bunch of tools that you could use to do that. Like you could use things like Crystal Nose, which just sits as an extension on LinkedIn. Doesn't do all the connection requesty stuff, but you can just use that to, to give you an idea of that person, how best to present your content to them. And then, you know, using other platforms like Humantics, a data platform that can tell you a little bit about the company. Or how, do they have any buying intent right now? And the individuals, all these tools are available and they're not, that, they're not super expensive. So there's stuff out there to do things manually and all we're looking to do is like, how can we do that from a scale perspective? And I think it's very possible uh, without becoming like the part of the problem, which we see now, which is this, like you just said, sharing information and irrelevant stuff to just, it just annoys people. Yeah. And, and I think uh, considering what we've been through over the last number of years and all that with COVID and now the economic uncertainty, all that kind of stuff is uh is people, uh, trust, I think, has always been obviously a, a huge factor in selling, but I think it's even more so. It's quite acute right now. Th- trust, authenticity, all of those kind of things. And therefore, as you said, being able to use an elegant process to build up and to build that relationship. I, I think that's what people are actually craving nowadays. What they don't want yeah. is, is, as we said, is they don't want surprises in terms of, oh, you're just another one of them. Yeah, exactly. I think the best sort of approach right now, and I think is just like to interrupt the pattern that we see is to not go for like the obvious stuff that we see, you know, these kind of, let's have a chat. Here's some, here's some irrelevant uh, useless <laughs> content. Let's have a call. It's actually like, I, I think we, the, the best type of approach is to do the opposite, right? Here's something I have actually done some research here and here's something I think is relevant. And actually I'm not looking to have a call with you at all. Let's just, you know, it'd be just be great to get your thoughts yeah. on it. It'd be great to just start a dialogue. That that's to me, that's the kind of 2023 cold outreach. And I think you, you're right, patience is important with that. And it's but I think the patience comes from understanding the objective. And the objective is certainly if your objective is to try to do a deal off a cold email, your objectives are all wrong. The if you've got the right process in place. That, that pipeline will start to feed itself with conversations. And at that point, you're into the offline human part, which as the expert, if you're the sales manager or if you're the business owner, you're the expert to carry that forward. What you, what the biggest challenge is just getting those conversations started at the moment. And that's what, that's what we're talking about today. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, you know, putting your, putting your future hat on, where do, where do you think this is going and where's your technology going? Clearly, AI is going to be a big fa- It's going to play a big role on this, and I and I think it's quite a triggering subject at the moment because people are worried about it taking over their jobs and all that kind of stuff. But uh, and I think it's I think it's early on with AI. I think we're early. I think what we're seeing right now is the first version, the first generative version, the first kind of for the masses tool that we've seen with ChatGPT. But I do believe we do believe that AI plays a big big part to play in helping us guiding helping us to sort of create the right content that we need to form those conversations do i think that ai is, is there just to write out every email I, I, I wouldn't want to let it loose and do that because i think it, it requires the right you need to feed the right information in or ask it the right questions to get the right answers back but i think we we see the blend of really sophisticated ai that's supporting the sales process not taking over but helping us to get through the heavy lifting pieces alongside premium quality data. The amount of, I think, you know, data is an underrated thing when it comes to prospecting, having the right email addresses, having the right access to the right context, the right brand, all that kind of stuff. Tapping into premium data is something that we are take really seriously. And then on top of that, then you've got your copywriting and then, you, you know, crafting the right messaging and, understanding the psychologies that we've just talked about making it feel more human and personalized and and like we said not necessarily going for the uh marriage at the first day but creating mm-hmm. a process that builds that trust builds that relationship with somebody from cold um and bringing them through at the right time you know that could be that could that might not be straight away but bringing that person through at the right time of the buying journey that's where our technology is going to be developed and i think that's where the future is there are lots of different tools out there that could be bolted up together to do all that. But I think the challenge for most salespeople, let's say, they're not marketers. So mm-hmm. they're being tasked, they're being tasked to build what are elaborate marketing tech, tech stacks and marketing funnels. And that's just not what salespeople should be doing. They should be focusing on having those 
real human conversations, the technology needs to just support that, not um, not create like this kind of Frankenstein that they can't control or they don't really understand how it works. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hundred hundred percent agree. And I think the other part too is is even with all these AI tools and and the uh, automation and data mining, all of this stuff. I think people have got the wrong end of the stick sometimes as they think this is going to replace says people. No, I think it's actually going to elevate the skills needed because now you have to, yeah. as, as you were said, when you go and actually start to build the offline relationship and stuff, you need to be more sophisticated as a salesperson anyway. So I think it's going to upskill yeah. people as opposed to downskill them. Absolutely. I think there needs to be more understanding of the buyer journey. So if you're a salesperson right now, you need to understand how sales and marketing work together. You don't need to be a marketer, but you need to understand that process from end to end. You need to understand, really need to understand your ideal clients and your ideal buyers, personas, in a deeper level. And you need to understand the technology. You don't necessarily need to be the master of it. I think it's understanding the process and the buyer journey. I think that's really important for a modern salesperson. And then knowing when to step in, that's the key. It's knowing where do I fit into that process? Where do I take over? Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Nick, this has been great. All Nick's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please tell people a little bit more about you and your company. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so, it's, uh, <laughs> so my myconversation.ai, that's that's us. Uh, that's the website. Um, we've been going for about three or four years now. You know, like a lot of companies with products of products of the last three or four years, um, some investment into technology. And what we did was we took like a process that worked really well and we've used technology to kind of to automate and make it more efficient and scalable, but we still got the human elements in there, like, you know, copywriting, uh, you know, managing campaigns, all that kind of stuff. But it's still very much human processes right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that's, that, that's, like, that's the passion that's been the focus for the last couple of years now. Uh, and we're just going to continue to just grow the technology. And, you know, we've got some really amazing clients right now. Uh, and that's where this year has obviously started out very busy for us. And hopefully that mm-hmm. that continues throughout the year. Fantastic. Well, go check it out. And um, yeah, I, th- I think it's a it, it's it's a gr- it's a great solution that you've uh, that you've outlined here. And I just think it's uh, yeah, just start being thoughtful. OK, just start being thoughtful about what you do and uh, and the success will come. So listen, thanks again, Nick. Uh, as I said, all Nick's information will be below this video. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again very soon. Thank you.